Uh, my name is Meryl Zimmer. I'm a member of the EAD Physiotherapy Committee, and I will be interviewing today Ruth Elise Mazari. She's the current vice chair of the Physiotherapy Committee of the EAD, and she works as a physiotherapist at the Oslo University Hospital. So, Ruth Elise, can you tell us something about the background of the paper? Yes. So, with the improvements in treatment over the recent years, there has also been a reduced risk of bleeds for people with hemophilia related to physical activity. And it's now recommended for this population to engage in regular physical activity because it has many physical and mental health benefits. But this doesn't necessarily equal to increased physical activity in this population. And what was the aim of the current paper? Yeah, the aim was to provide a brief overview of physical activity in the haemophilia population and factors that influence physical activity among these people. And we wanted to provide recommendations for clinicians on how to promote physical activity, including specific information for the age groups of children and adolescents, adults and older adults. Okay, that was really clear. And do you also have some key messages for us? Yes. Um, it does seem that physical activity levels among people with hemophilia are improving, especially among the younger, uh, younger part of the population. But we know that many people with hemophilia still have lower physical activity levels than recommended, and that increased physical activity should be promoted. And in order to do so, clinicians should be up to date on physical activity recommendations. And the whole treatment team should have a coherent approach in their communication about physical activity. And because physical activity is a complex behavior, an understanding of individual, social, and environmental factors influencing physical activity in various age groups is important to tailor successful advice and interventions. So general barriers can be comorbidities, lack of time and energy, and facilitators can be that the person finds the activity enjoyable, that he has confidence in his own abilities to be physically active, good support, and that he lives close to recreation facilities. For haemophilia-specific factors, this can include fear of bleeds, the level of arthropathy, and access to treatment, intensity of treatment, and adherence. Yeah, so we advocate that physical activity recommendations should be individualized based on the needs of each person with haemophilia, their unique thoughts and beliefs about physical activity, and each individual's starting point and their motivation for physical activity. And finally, we recommend clinicians to advise each person on how to build up physical activity gradually. And remember that everything counts, that some physical activity is better than none, and that there's always benefit of increased physical activity, even if one doesn't reach the recommended levels. Thank you, Ruth Elise, for uh, highlighting those key messages. And I hope this was uh, helpful for the clinicians in their daily practice. Mm -hmm.